The Mongols. Up until 1206, the Mongols had lived in nomadic tribes around Eastern and Central Asia, but that all changed when Chinggis, also known as Genghis Khan, unified the tribes into an empire. This new empire had a military of about 100,000 to 125,000. They were all about invading, and they were good at it. Mongols let conquered enemies who, sur who surrendered live, but if they resisted, they were brutally slain and their civilizations were shattered to the ground. The Mongol army took over Turkish peoples in Tibet, northern China, and Persia. In the year 1211, the Mongols raided the nomadic Jurchen people in northern China and continued to raid more and more intensely until 1215 when they captured the capital, which was suitably renamed Kanbalik, meaning City of the Khan. By 1220, the Mongols had control over northern China. In 1218, Genghis Khan wanted to open a friendly trade relationship with Persia, but the Persian's king killed the people who Genghis Khan sent to Persia. A year later, the Mongols took an ar army to invade Persia. They easily took out Persia's army, and the king died as well. They destroyed city after city, smashing buildings to the ground, and killed hundreds of thousands of people. After Genghis Khan died in 1227, Kublai Khan became the new leader, and the empire split into four smaller regional empires. This tre the treasury overspent its money, and the peasants were overused, causing low revenues. In the 1290s, the Khan made paper money, which the Mongols did not accept, and merchants closed their shops and trade stopped. The government in northern China completely collapsed in 1335 because the last Khan died without any descendants to take his place. In Persia, the Mongols still had local government until the 14th century when the Turkish people took control of the central government. The Turks Throughout their time on the Silk Road, the Turks were a nomadic society, lived in a variety of locations throughout Europe and Asia, and were always on the move. Their prolonged dominance on the Silk Road allowed them to control not only the Central Asian steppes, but to also settle in Persia, Anatolia, and India. The Turkish nomads were always looking to trade their goods with established settlements. The trade was small scale, as it was mostly agricultural products and products that the nomads could not manufacture themselves. However, there was also a large scale, long distance trade happening between the nomads and other civilizations thanks to the Silk Road. Their familiarity with expansive portions of the steppes made their traveling lives extremely easy, and the caravans they led through the trade networks of the Silk Road moved smoothly. Over time, a conversion to Islam began to take place within the Turkish nomads. Starting with captured nomads in the Abbasid Caliphate, conversion to Islam began to slowly become more commonplace. The largest scale of Turkish conversion was in the late 10th century when the Saljuks moved to Iran and converted to Islam in hopes of good fortune. The nomadic Turks were not only a sophisticated trading society, but were also very strong militarily. The rapid expansion began when the Khans, or rulers, of societies organized large confederations of their people to fight for them. The reason they were so deadly was their extremely deadly cavalry. The nomads were very comfortable and very skilled with horses, which is what gave the cavalry the power it had. They had tremendous power with bows on horses, and few armies could defend against their mobility, and few armies could defeat them because retreat was always an option. The Saljuk Turks moved into the Abbasid Empire, and had overshad overshadowed it by the 11th century. The other Turks focused their attention on the Byzantine empires, also known as Anatolia, and began migrating there in the 10th century. In 1071, the Turks defeated the Byzantine Empire at Manzikert and took their emperor hostage. The people of the Byzantine Empire, who had been oppressed, looked to the Saljuks for hope. By the halfway point of the 14th century, the Byzantine Empire had become largely Turkish and it had become a largely Turkish and Islamic area. While the Saljuks were invading the Abbasid and Byzantine empires, the Ghaznavids were wreaking havoc in northern India. They began with the goal of plundering and gaining wealth, but eventually moved to permanent conquer. They began with Punjab, then Gujarat, and Bengal, and by the 13th century had complete control over northern India. There was, there was much ambition among the nomadic Muslims to invade and conquer southern India, but due to threats from the north and resistance from the south, they were not able to. They used their enormous army to defend themselves rather than to invade other lands. One of the most important and remembered civilizations in history is the Vikings. These Nordic nomads took to the seas to attack and plunder mostly villages and monasteries. The first Vikings attacked unprotected monasteries in the 790s, learning from their mistakes and successes. 
In 844 CE, 150 Viking ships sailed up the Garonne River in southern France and plundered towns along the way. Although they are famous for attacking smaller towns, they have actually mounted very sizable attacks on major cities. In 845 CE, a Viking force of 800 ships appeared without warning in front of the city of Hamburg, and in 885, a Viking fleet of 700 ships sailed up the Seine River and besieged Paris. Another large raid in 994 CE saw an armada of 100 ships sail up the Thames River and attack London. To attack this efficiently, Vikings coordinated their ships' movements to take advantage of the tides. They also developed their shipbuilding and seafaring skills throughout the 7th and 8th century, which helped greatly with their nautical lifestyle. The Vikings also used the dragon to intimidate their enemies that they were attacking. It was so easy for the Vikings to attack along the coast because many of the towns had no defenses, only a local force that could respond quickly to invasions, but was no imperial force. This was especially present in the Carolingian society. Plundering and attacking towns were not the only part of their culture. The Vikings also had increased agricultural production during this time period. This fueled rapid population growth. The Vikings are vitally important in the development of the Silk Road. Vikings were international traders because of their easy access to the seas and oceans. They traded silk for other items from Constantinople and bought furs, ivory, and skins from Western Europe. The Vikings kept open the trade route between Byzantium and the West. They also played a role in trade between Western Europe and the rest of Eurasia, as this provided this is provided because Viking coins have been found as far east as Samarkand in Central Asia. Something from the Silk Road that the Vikings adopted was Christianity. Olaf I met a Christian seer while he was raiding on the islands of Scilly in 986. The seer predicted an attack on him, and this convinced him to get baptized and to convert to his country to Christianity by any means necessary. He convinced his country to convert by destroying temples and by torturing and killing pagans that didn't convert. The Silk Road was a key factor in a lot of historical events back then, and if the Vikings prevented trade between Europe and Eurasia, the events would not have happened and our world would be very different today. The Huns A nomadic society based in Eastern Europe that is most known for their small-lived empire under Attila the Hun in the mid-5th century AD. The Huns are connected to the Silk Road as they are the descendants of the Xiongnu people, who were the catalyst for the making of a Silk Road. The Huns often fought their wars near the Silk Road as the victor would gain control of trade, transportation, etc. People may think of the Huns as savage people, or perhaps even noble savage, but this is quite simply false. The Huns may have been militaristic and hostile, but so were many great classical societies. They wreaked havoc through Asia and Europe for 200 years and established their dominance. They were a force to be reckoned with. China erected part of its Great Wall in order to defend against the aggressive Hunnic campaign. Horses are iconic to the Huns, as they practically did everything on them. They fought, ate, traded, traveled, and negotiated peace treaties, all on horseback. The horses also contributed to the military success. The Huns were removed from the spotlight when Attila passed in 453 due to a nosebleed in his sleep, preventing a complete domination of the Western Roman Empire. Little is known about the Huns after this time. The word Hun was also an ethnic slur for German soldiers in World War I when Kaiser Wilhelm II told his soldiers in a speech to be like the Huns, ruthless and savage, even though they would fall into the noble savage classification.